6x to the fourth minus 17x cubed plus 9x squared plus 7x minus 4. Okay, as a first shot, we're going to apply the rational roots test. So the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6, and the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. So what this means is that by the rational roots test, by the rational roots test, the only possible rational solutions to this particular equation, or I guess this function here, this uh, polynomial, are going to be these factors at the back end of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficient. So in other words, it could be 1 over 1, it could be 2 over 1, or it could be 4 over 1. On the other hand, it could be 1 over 2, it could be 1 over 1 over, let's see, we just went over the 1, so 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 4 over 2, I'm not going to count those separately because I already have them. Then going to the 3, we could have a 1 over 3, we could have a 2 over 3, or we could have a 4 over 3, and then finally, with that leading 6, we could possibly go 1 over 6, 2 over 6, or 4 over 6. And each one of these is technically either positive or negative. It could be either a positive or a negative solution. Okay, so you might think that there's a lot of options here, but it's much less than infinity at least, right? So there's like uh, 16 different possibilities here. But since on the exam you're allowed to use a calculator, you might have used the calculator to look at the graph of this function and see what some good reasonable guesses would be. And it turns out that one half and four thirds are actually solutions. So if you didn't think to do that, then you probably would have gone through and tested each one separately. But I'm just going to, since I know that they're one half and four thirds from observation, I'm going to go through and show you how you would have gotten the last two solutions. So one half is a solution. Six, negative 17, nine, seven, negative four. This also verifies how I check to see if something's a root. 6, 3, negative 14, negative 7, 2. I'm doing synthetic division here, of course. That's 4 and 0. So that means that the 1 half worked. Now the 4 thirds, I claim, is the other one that works. So if we divide in by the 4 thirds, 6 times 4 thirds is 8. And then there's a negative 6. And that's a negative 8. And that's a negative 6. Okay, so that's a negative 8, and that's a 0. Okay, so that means that the 1 half here and the 4 thirds here give us that this polynomial would factor into x minus 1 half, x minus 4 thirds, and then the residual left over here, which would be a 6x squared minus x minus 6. 6x squared minus 6x minus 6. Notice that there's a common factor there of 6, which can be pulled out. So I'm going to pull the 6 out, but I'm going to pull it out in the form of a 2 and a 3. So I can bring a 2 into here and a 3 into here. Because when I do that, this little factor becomes 2x minus 1. And then as I bring the 3 into this part, it would be 3x minus 4. And our simplified residual now would be x squared minus x minus 1. But notice that we wanted to find all roots. So you might take some time trying to factor this. It turns out it doesn't factor very nicely. So in order to find those last two roots, you would have to use something like completing the square or possibly the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, we see that the last two solutions, last two roots, would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and that's all over 2 times 1. That's just applying the quadratic formula to this residual quadratic. So the last two solutions are 1 plus or minus radical of 1 plus 4, which would be 5, over 2. So your four solutions are 1 plus and minus red, 5 over 2, one half and four thirds.